So Bo, my Ducati Super Sport 939 has uh, had a temperature problem. I was out on a road trip and the temperature gauge suddenly started flashing high at me. So I pulled over on the side of the road because Bo's temperature started flashing high. It's a cold day. It shouldn't happen. He didn't feel hot when I pulled over and he, uh, he's got all his coolant still in him, didn't lose any power and even after just a couple of minutes of sitting on the side of the road, the temperature was only 71 degrees Celsius. So. I have a feeling I've got a faulty temperature sender. Rode into the next town, had brunch for probably about 45 minutes, started the bike up again and things seemed pretty normal and they did for the rest of the day and into the next day. But then it started flashing high at me again. There's that high temperature flashing again even though the bike's not hot. I've just stopped the bike, shut it off, turned it on again and the um, the temperature looked normal but as soon as I've taken off again it was fluctuating between low and 45 and now it's back flashing high at me. But I was pretty convinced that the bike was okay and it was really just the temperature sensor that was playing up so I ordered a new one and this video is about how I installed it. The temperature sensor for a Ducati Supersport 939 is part number 55243442A. I think I paid about 75 Australian dollars for this one. I also bought a new water pump drain plug seal, this copper piece, which is part number 85250631A, and that was about $2.30 Australian. The workshop manual for the Supersport calls for Loctite 510 for the sensor thread and I couldn't find anything else that I could use instead so I just bit the bullet, bought this massive tube which was the only size I could find. I think it was about $50 too but with all the work Scotty and I do on engines for cars and motorcycles I'm hoping we'll get to use it again. For tools I used uh, Allen keys, um, four mil mostly but I have a couple of bolts on my fairing that were three mil. Uh, because both fairings need to be removed to more easily see the level in the coolant overflow reservoir on the right and then on the left to get access to the temperature sensor. Needle nose pliers for clips, a ratchet with a 10mm socket for removing the battery, a torque wrench for the water pump drain plug and the temperature sensor but I later worked out I didn't have a snowflakes chance in hell of getting a torque wrench into the sensor. Uh, and a brand new clean container for coolant since the coolant was new and I reused it. Importantly, also for me at least, a homemade cold brew coffee and a protein bar. I have three things that help me read and clear error codes on my Supersport. Firstly, the Ducati Diagnostic Tool 4-pin to OBD2 adapter. This plugs into this OBD2 to USB Elm 327 cable scan tool and I got both of these online from OBD2 Australia and there are links in the description. This in turn plugs into my phone and I'm using the Talk Pro app, uh, the paid version. Now many people use JP Diag or Melco Diag software, but for me that's cumbersome because it runs on a PC or laptop and not a phone. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can only clear the check engine lights and not all the error codes, like the one I'm expecting to see with the temp sensor. Now ignition does need to be on, but the bike doesn't need to be running. Talk Pro has an error code reader and it found the error. Sorry, it's not in focus, but the error is P0116, powertrain, engine coolant, temperature circuit, range slash performance problem. And that's exactly what I expected to see. 
So I'm clearing the code now because I'll be disconnecting the battery to get access to the temperature sensor and I want to be sure that the new sensor starts with no error codes already present. So, all cleared. First up, uh, I was removing the battery to get access to the temperature sensor. I wasted probably an hour or more and more than a few expletives trying to remove the entire battery box as the manual said to, but too many things were connected to it, more than the manual showed. But I realized that if I just remove the water pump hose, that lower one, and let the battery box just kind of dangle down, I could reach the temperature sensor. So I went on to drain the coolant so I could remove that hose. Now clearly Bo does not have a prostate problem. I only lost a bit of coolant um, and I, I just topped up with distilled water when I refilled it. The water pump drain plug got that new copper seal Then I could remove the water pump hose to get my hand in to reach the temperature sensor. The sensor is screwed into the water union that I think is somewhere between the horizontal cylinder head and the thermostat or thermo switch as the um, parts diagram says. Now because I couldn't see in there it took me a bit to work out what clip style was holding the connector to the sensor uh, but I figured it out and then it came off. I did pull the connector out to check it over and make sure there was still enough grease in there. Apparently you know some kind of electrical connector grease I guess. So also add a 19 mil spanner to your tool list to get the sensor out. Looks a bit cruddy in there, hey? The manual said to use lock 4 flange sealant on the temperature sensors thread, which is that Loctite 510. Uh, like I said earlier, I couldn't find a reliable source for what to use instead of this, so I just splurged and got this massive tube of Loctite 510. But I couldn't get the sensor started in the thread. After a few moments of panic that the original sensor was cross-threaded in there, I chased the thread managed to clean out quite a bit of gunk, um, which was probably from the original Loctite, and that did the trick. Then I tightened the sensor in by feel, because there is no way known to humankind to get a torque wrench in there without pulling half the bike apart. I had paid attention to the force that it took to get the old sensor unscrewed, which I thought felt, well, not loose, but certainly not as tight as the 23 Newton meters that the workshop manual says. Anyway, the old sensor didn't leak at whatever light torque it had been up, done up to, so I'm pretty confident I lent on the new one enough. I refilled the coolant, uh, ran the bike up to temperature, but got a leak. Uh, it was just a clamp, not quite tight enough on the water pump hose that I'd taken off. Uh, again, didn't lose much coolant, thankfully, and no more leaks after I tightened up the hose clamp. I ended up running the bike up to temperature three times. The last time was on an incline to let any air bubbles find their way up and out of the radiator, and, and there were a few. But job done. I 
I've just come back from a test ride and everything seems fine. No more coolant leaks and the, uh, the temperature is behaving very normally like I would expect it to. I stopped halfway in a car park and let the bike heat all the way up until the thermo fans came on uh, and it, it um, cooled right back down again too. So I think he's fixed. I'm going to put him back together again. Um, I hope the video has helped you. If you're in the same situation, thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.